Oh, g'day. This looks a bit sus, doesn't it? You've got a guy walking around the streets with a drone, e evil drone. Got a battery in one pocket. In the other pocket, we've got a thing that looks like a, a gun. Hmm. Anyway, what I'm doing today is I'm doing another hover test. This time I'm using the Zippy battery. It's the same capacity as the previous uh, one I did with the Turnergy, 3,300 milliampere hours. I'm not expecting a huge difference between the two, but it's interesting to, uh, to do a comparison. Now today, you're not gonna sit through the entire hover test. I'll fast track through that on the video. But another thing we're going to do today, and this is the gun looking object. This is a non-contact infrared thermometer. I'm gonna do a before and after measurement, uh, a temperature measurement of the motors. Again, out of curiosity, just to, uh, to see how much the motors are heating up. So let's get started. Welcome to Toronto. GPS compass module in position. I've got the voltage telemetry module from FR Sky here. One thing I've done, I've labelled each arm with a motor number and I've written uh, on each propeller in texture, trying to make it uh, as idiot proof as possible. Now just before we uh, fly today, I'm going to take a temperature reading of, of the motors, or motor. You can see the uh, LED pointer in the motor winding there. Okay, let's get going. In GPS mode. Some of those gusts. So, whew. so I'm just going to, uh, like the other day with the Turnergy battery, I'm just going to let it hover there. Nothing special. First time to get excited is when the first level voltage protection kicks in. And then the And the uh, second level protection will kick in and the thing will do an auto land. It's hanging in there. I mean, it, it is actually turned out to be quite a different day today. The, the wind is much stronger than... So let me drift this across. I'm trying not to make it manoeuvre all that much as well. It's just meant to be a hover test. Yeah, it's quite a different day today. It's, it's, it's a lot... Uh, it's a lot windier, so I don't know how that's going to affect the, uh, the hover time test. Now if the uh, LED indicator, the infrared, the, um, if the LED indicators are a bit, a bit brighter, I'd, uh, I could take some temperature tests along the way, but it's, it's pretty hard to point the thing outdoors. That's me just manoeuvring the thing. touching it, it's just, <laughs> it's the wind. Now after filling my pockets with a battery and a thermometer and keys and stuff, I actually forgot to pack the stopwatch. So I'm not gonna know the time until we get into post-production of this video. It's gonna raise the thing a bit just so I can see the LED, there we go. It's flushing yellow so we've Definitely tripped the first level protection. And I thought the second level had been tripped then, but uh, it's just the wind buffeting the thing around. So let me take it up a little bit. Just so there's a pronounced difference. That was it. There we go. Second stage uh, voltage protection was just tripped. Well, okay, that's going to be interesting to see how long that lasted. So let's shut it down. Okay, well, just to recap, that's running the yellow uh, Zippy battery. Same capacity as the Turnergy I ran last time, 3.3 uh, ampere hours. Um, and the motors. Just disconnect the battery, first of all. The motors, look. They're only barely lukewarm, but I think that's more of a function of being out in the, the sun today. Let's see what the... Uh... Hmm. 
Well, I don't think that was a valid temperature test. Um, reading cooler than uh, before we took off, but the sun isn't in and out of clouds all day, so. The motors certainly don't feel uh, warm to touch at all. But I think it might be better to, uh, to try and use this on an on a overcast day where, the, uh, where it's more consistent. Anyway, um, there you go.